Well, let's prepare our hearts and our minds today for worship. Well, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome, everybody, to Mitchell's Presbyterian Church on this second Sunday of Easter 2021. How nice it is to say those words with all of you sitting out here. It feels good. It feels really good. I know it's different for us today uh, with our mask and having to distance, but it is so great to be here. I know we want to still do what we need to do to keep everybody safe. And a few things we changed. You noticed probably the offering plate out at the front when you came in uh, for your offerings to give. Uh, when we end the service today, I'll leave this way, but I'll, it's a pretty day. I'll be out in the parking area and can greet some folks out there outside today on this beautiful and glorious spring day. Uh, we are still recording our services. Chuck has uh, moved to the balcony. Chuck and I, uh, we were talking, it just seems strange not to do our usual recording this week. Uh, sort of like when you have a dream that you missed your uh, college, last college class or something. It's like, I'm supposed to be here somewhere this week. Where was I supposed to be? But uh, But it's good. It's all good. So, so yeah, so it is still being recorded, and so with that, I'm the Michael Klang, the Covenant Pastor here at Mitchell's, and it's just so glad that you've joined us on our YouTube channel at home or wherever you may be today, and, and here as well, and we just pray that the next, uh, this hour that we spend together will just be a real blessing to all of us. Uh, let's see, the session will be meeting today after uh, worship. So please, please keep them uh, in your prayers. And I don't know if there's any other announcements from the congregation today. But I really would like us just to take a deep breath and just maybe sit back for one second and just feel being back in this space again. And just feel, feel that. So I'm just going to sit and maybe we'll just sit for 30 seconds and just Feel the presence of this space again.
Well, united together as one wherever we are on this day, whether here or virtually watching, let us now call ourselves to worship with the call that's printed in your bulletin. Peace be with you. How good and pleasant it is when we live together in unity. Receive the Holy Spirit. It is like precious oil on the head. The blessing of the Lord. Let us stand. Our hymn of adoration is number 138. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God Almighty. So stand as you are able as we sing this song today. As we gather together this morning, let us affirm what we believe by reciting together our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Please be seated. For God has made known His power to us is in his deeds, his deeds, or let us rephrase that. God has been made known to us in his power and deeds and works of wonder and will not abandon us if we confess the truth about our lives. So let us pray together in unison our prayer of confession. Let us pray. You have shown yourself to us, O God, by word and spirit, with signs and wonders in flesh and blood. Yet we still struggle to live and believe the good news of Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us. Forgive us. Enter our lives and cast out our fear so that we may come to trust in you and have life in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old is gone. Behold, the new has come. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. Well, join me again in prayer. Open our eyes and soften our hearts, O God, through the work of your Holy Spirit, that in the hearing of your word we may receive new life. Amen. Our first reading today comes to us from the Acts of the Apostles. We're going to be reading in chapter 4, verses 32 through 35. So hear these words today. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any that had need. The Word of God. Thanks be to God. Our prayer response today is going to be, O oh Lord, Send us your peace. And as I always like to say, the psalmist does remind us to be still and to know that I am God. So as we come to this prayer, I just like that 30 seconds of silence just to breathe out any anxiety you may have and just breathe in, breathe in that peace that God brings. And today I just really want us to, to sit in silence and remember what it's been like to be away from here, and to remember again what it feels like to be in this place with others, and to remember those who are not able to join us yet. So let's just take some breaths and breathe in the living God.
God, we pray for the church. Let your church be a living sign of the woundedness and healing of Christ, sharing the gift of forgiveness and the gospel of reconciliation. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. We pray for all nations. Show us how good and pleasant it is when people live together in unity and anoint us with your wisdom so that we may seek the ways of life. Pour out your blessing, O God. Send us your spirit of peace. We pray for this community. Give us a vision of the common good not clinging to our own possessions, but seeking the fullness of life for all as a testimony to Christ's resurrection. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. And we pray for loved ones. Be near to those who walk in darkness and lead us all into Christ's light so that our fellowship may be true and our joy may be complete. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. And we pray for all those who have died. We remember those in this congregation who have gone on to eternal rest since we last gathered together. Mary Sargent, Ethel Carpenter, Clark Chase. And in the silence of this moment, we remember other friends or family members who have died. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. And we pray for all those on our prayer list and for the needs of this congregation. Touch each of them with the healing power of your Spirit. Bless our session and our PNC as they continue to meet and discern your will for this congregation. And we ask all this in the name of the one who died and rose for us, who taught us to pray, saying these words, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, the earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. Thank you, everybody, for continuing to send in your tithes and offerings. As we said earlier, there's a collection uh, plate at the front in the narthex and one as you exit out the fellowship hall. So please uh, give your offerings there today. And for those that we have received, let us now give our thanks and our praise with the singing of our doxology. Please stand. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks and praise for light and life and love and above all the presence of the living Lord among us. By your spirit who breathes within us, strengthen our faith, use our gifts and work in our lives to bear witness to the resurrection of Christ our Lord in whose name we pray. Amen. 
Our hymn of devotion today is number 324, Open My Eyes That I May Sing, Let, or my, That I May See, I guess maybe to sing too. Open my eyes that I may see. Let us sing. Please be seated. Our second lesson today comes to us from John. We're reading chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you have retained the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? 
Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Word of God and the stories of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Join me once again in prayer. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. Amen. Well, welcome to what has been come to known, I guess, as Doubting Thomas Sunday. Every year, no matter what cycle of the lectionary you are in, the appointed gospel reading for the second Sunday of Easter is this story we just read about Thomas and the disciples. It's also the Sunday that after a busy Holy Week, many pastors take off for a chance to recharge their batteries and let their associate pastor or youth pastor preach. So you could call it a seminary intern Sunday. But instead of thinking of doubting Thomas or seminary intern, I would like to call it show me Sunday. Now, I'm not sure if they do this anymore, but one of the favorite things for me as a kid was all of the surprises and toys that they used to put inside cereal boxes. I mean, Captain Crunch, Lucky Charms, even my Cheerios. And I think about it now, what an amazing marketing strategy for us uh, sugar-addicted kids, right? We'd first, we'd see this item on a Sunday morning cartoon commercial, and then we would beg mom to buy that cereal, please, please, please. And if she did, just as soon as she got that box home from the store, we stuffed our arm down inside, digging through the cereal and crumbs till we pulled out that treasure. Did anybody else do that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't even remember what any of the treats are except for one. Many license plates of all 50 states. Now, unfortunately, I could not eat so much cereal that the promotion ended before I could collect them all. But my favorite, it was my favorite by far. Well, at the time, I had mastered all of the states and their capitals. And so learning the official license plate of each state, which, you know, back in the day, there was only one. Uh, and the little slogans that went with them was just a natural progression for me. Now, Oklahoma was boring. Oklahoma is okay. Whoa. Uh, but there was my dad's home state of Connecticut, the nutmeg state. Arizona, I loved. The Grand Canyon state. New Mexico, the land of enchantment. And, of course, our neighboring state, Missouri, the show me state. Now, I always wondered about that one. While there are several stories as to how it originated, it always sounded like something us kids would say to each other when someone made an outrageous claim. Hey, Mike, I can ride a wheelie on my bike all the way down the block and back. No, you can't. Prove it. Show me, right? Well, John's whole gospel could be called the show me gospel because it's not just Thomas who needs to see more. The first example was way back in the first chapter of John when Philip says to Nathanael, We have found him whom Moses in the law and the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael replies with skepticism, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? In other words, show me. Nathanael goes and sees and three verses later is saying to Jesus, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. And then there was the encounter that Jesus had with the Samaritan woman at the well. After their meeting, she leaves her water jar and heads back into town to tell all her neighbors, come and see a man who told me everything I have done. John tells us that some believe right away, but others said, prove it. We need to see for ourselves. So, show me. The story ends with John telling us, it's no longer because of what you have said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves and we know that he truly is the Savior of the world. 
Well, fast forward to Easter. As we read last Sunday, Mary Magdalene ran and told the disciples, I have seen the Lord. Well, John does not tell us if they believed her testimony or not. He merely continues the story with what we read today, that they were behind locked doors, afraid that the forces that had conspired to bring about the execution of Jesus might be coming for them. Well, Jesus comes into this secured room and says, Peace be with you. He shows his hands and his feet, demonstrating to them that the risen one will forever be recognizable as the crucified one. They rejoice and then tell Thomas and Mary what, or tell Thomas what Mary had told them. We have seen the Lord. Well, Thomas replies with the post-resurrection equivalent of, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Or the Samaritan woman's, sir, you had no bucket and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Or Mary's, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take. Bearing Nathaniel's skepticism and Mary's broken heart, Thomas needs more. Prove it to me. Show me so I can believe. Remember, to believe for John is to trust. And John seems to understand that trusting and growing in faith is a process. And with that, a process that can move slowly. I know all you educators out there are familiar with Lawrence Kohlberg and his theory of moral development, which looks at six stages we go through in our moral development from childhood to adulthood, starting with stage one and our desire to avoid punishment and our focus on what impacts us alone. Eventually, we arrive at stage six, where our morals focus on a just society for everyone, something like we read in our Acts lesson today. Well, theologian James Fowler looked at something similar with our faith development. He theorizes that there are seven stages that, of faith development that we all go through, starting with trust and distrust, and eventually arriving at a universalizing faith that is comfortable with paradox and shifting paradigms. But in either of these models, you don't just jump from stage one to the ending stages overnight. It's a slow process moving from stage to stage, and it can take a lifetime. And at times, this growth is really, really hard. And John knew this. As he was writing this gospel to his struggling new community, he knew that they, and us, would need to be reminded of this over and over again. So he gives us space for questioning. Jesus got this too. He realized that grasping the experience of the resurrection is a huge paradigm shift that would take time to understand. So he doesn't scold or chastise Thomas or the disciples for that matter who even after his appearance to them last week, they're still sitting in the locked room. So what does he do? He gives them peace. He gives them his breath. He gives them the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Advocate. He gives them grace and forgiveness. He's helping them grow. He gives that to us too. That's the miracle on this second Sunday of Easter, that Jesus comes again and again and again to these scared and confused disciples. And He keeps coming to us in our fear and our confusion and in all of our questions to help us grow. And thank God, because I don't know about you, but sitting here 2,000 years after the resurrection, I too sometimes struggle with what it means. And I can find myself in my own locked room. I can be like Thomas, who was not doubting, but was rather trying to understand this unique and amazing event. I too can say, show me. Help me wrap my arms. So maybe that's why Easter is not just a day, but rather a season, a season of 50 days, 50 days to digest it, to slowly let it transform us and move us from our locked places to a deeper and deeper faith. So 
Have we metaphorically locked ourselves in this morning? Are we sitting here saying, show me. Jesus comes and says, okay, here are my wounds. Here is my spirit. Here is the comforter. Go and do. And when you feel locked in or confused or need to ask any questions, don't worry. I'll be there too. Just breathe me in. The disciples, they did not warrant a second visit by Jesus, but they get one, along with the renewed gift of peace. And Thomas is given exactly what he requested, a chance to see and touch Jesus and respond with a confession of faith. My Lord and my God. Show me, Jesus says, you bet. May it be so. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. God, may we be doers of your word and not just hearers. Thank you that you are present with us in all the places of our lives, including those times when We, like Thomas, need you to show us more. Help us grow that we too might confess, my Lord and my God. Amen. Our hymn of dedication is going to be number 438, Blessed Be the Ties That Bind. I'd invite you to sing, sting, I'd invite you to sing and stand as you're able. 438. So show me. Thomas is questioning. It's a model for our faith and growth as God meets us wherever we are in all the locked areas of our lives. Thanks be to God. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Big hugs for all of you all today. So great to see you all. Receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. God's shalom today and every day. Amen.